Hi and welcome back to the channel. Um, you've obviously seen the, the video thumbnail and read the title. Um, it's okay, a little misleading. I am obviously not selling an entire railway. I am not selling the Lan uh, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. Um, however, I am selling some models I bought um, with the intention originally of building kind of a uh, not dream layout, um, but I had at one point in time I had a a fairly good plan and idea of what I wanted to do um, in railway modelling um, and my um, interests have changed substantially over the, over that over that time and it's now lo no longer something that I have either the space to build or the interest in building and some of the models I bought um, <clears throat> have sat around for over a decade um, and have never been used and I decided that um, it it was time to hopefully move them on um, to somebody who will appreciate them um, and that will also obviously free up some uh, some money for me to kind of reinvest in other bits of railway modeling that I am now more interested in um, I have some ideas for some more tools and things I would like to buy for instance that are quite expensive um, so it seems a seems a good time to uh, to to put them up for sale um, but I thought rather than just sticking them on eBay, which is the plan, and there will be links in the descriptions, in the description um, to the eBay, the eBay auctions if, um, or listings if, if they've not already uh, sold by the time you're watching this. But I thought I'd give you, I'd show you the models and give you a bit of their history uh, and explain why I bought them, what my plan was, uh, <coughs> and let you see the models in a bit more detail, uh, especially if you're interested in buying them, uh, then you might get on the, the eBay listing. So, as you guessed from the title, my original plan was to model the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway. This all started because um, when we bought the house that we're currently living in, uh, back in 2009, there is a railway on the bottom of the garden. Now, that's what's now part of the Penistone line. It runs between Huddersfield and Sheffield. Um, and a little piece of it, which is the bit that runs across the back of our house, is one of the few remaining bits, on this side of the Pennines at least, of the Woodhead the old wood headline that used to run from kind of Manchester uh, across to Sheffield. It would come across the wood head through the tunnel, drop into Penistone and then drop kind of straight into Sheffield. Um, and the little piece of the line between kind of Penistone uh, and where it now kind of turns off to go towards Barnsley um, was obviously part of that, that wood headline. And that ran along the bottom of the, of the garden. Um, and I got it in my, my head that, as you kind of know from previous videos, I like modeling things that are real and based in history and stuff. And I got it in my head that maybe I'd model a short section of the line um, or even part of Penistone Station just nearby and pick up um, some of the older trains that would have run along the line in the past. Not new diesels and stuff that I could look out my window and see, uh, but the steam trains um, that would have potentially run along there. Uh, now, <clears throat> at the time, there wasn't a huge amount of models available that were suitable. In fact, I think at the time there was only one uh, model that was available ready to run and this was before I'd started building uh, loco kits and, and designing kits. So I was looking at OO gauge ready to run locomotives and there was only one at the time uh, that, I, that I was aware of um, <coughs> which was this. Now I've got them in the boxes at the moment once I've shown you what they are, I will um, get them both out of the box um, so you can see them a little better. But let's let's just start with a quick overview of what we've got. So what we have here <coughs> is the um, Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway, what was referred to as their Pug locomotive. So it's a small um, 040 tank engine. Now this model has been made by numerous companies over the years. Um, this is a Dapol branded one. Um, it's now, um, the tooling now belongs to Hornby. And they still sell this um, in numerous liveries, uh, often um, kind of British Railway black um, and, 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 other, and other things. Um, <coughs> but there were, at one point at least, a fairly small number, I think you don't see these come up very often, um, done in the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway livery. Um, this is just the standard one. There were a couple of really special um, very limited edition ones that had um, more historical features. I actually owned one that was called the Dockerer's Umbrella, and it had a little flap over the top of the over the top of the chimney to stop sparks um, getting up and burning the overhead uh, line in in Liverpool. Um, 
so that was my that was the first one I bought and as I say we'll get them out of the box in a minute and have a look but this is a essentially a goods train so it's in black with a a red a red lining um, and that was the first one I bought and I thought that what I'd do possibly with maybe maybe some kind of as I say station layout with some shunting and, and trucks and stuff in a little in a little kind of Yorkshire station um, but then <clears throat> we got to 2013 and um, Backman released a new model in conjunction with the National Railway Museum um, and this again lights not great I'll get them out of the box in a minute um, is the um, 242 tank locomotive that's preserved in the National Railway Museum um, I've actually seen it in the National Railway Museum I'll try and put a photo up here uh, that I took of it um, in the in the Railway Museum but Backman put out this very limited edition model um, which was as you as you can see from the if I can get the light right uh, from the end of the box um, produced exclusively for the National Railway Museum they actually only made a hundred of these um, so this one's really rare and it also um, has only ever been out of the box once before uh, I'm going to take it out of the box today uh, I'm going to test run it and I will um, show you some footage of it moving um, but it is essentially this is this is a mint very rare as I say one of only 100 uh, locomotives. And this one's a passenger locomotive. Uh, you can see the linings much more accurate. Again, we'll get into all this when I get them out of the box. Uh, but I wanted to show you them in the boxes first. So if you give me a second, uh, we'll have them out and we'll have a, a proper, slightly more careful, uh, hopefully careful, uh, look at these at these models. Right. We've now got them uh, out of the boxes. We can have a proper look. Um, so. As you can see, uh, for this, we'll start with the, the goods loco again. Um, we have the original um, DAPOL information sheet, got a bit of history about it. You can see this is obviously the original sheet from the standard version, not the LNYR version. You've got a, a BR black um, liveried picture on the information sheet and um, the back, which has the details of how you get it apart, etc., shows that they also did it in a uh, LMS livery at the time. Um, again, I think that's black with just the LMS um, letters picked out on it. Um, again, they were meant as goods trains, so they're not really kind of um, in what you would imagine um, kind of crimson um, LMS colour. They're they're usually black with some with some detail. Um, so that's the original sheet uh, maintenance sheet, uh, and here's the here's the loco. So as you can see. Um, as I said, it's quite it's quite plain the lining, um, a bit better than an unlined BR black. Um, so you've got these two red red lines um, round for the bead for the for the lining. Um, it's a lovely printed. Um, if I can get the camera to focus properly, nicely printed uh, works plate. Um, I did have um, some etched uh, by uh, Narrow Planet. It was my first attempt at drawing up etched artwork. Prior, well prior to um, doing anything related to actually building models, um, I drew up some some very rough. Well, not very rough. I did I did some very detailed um, SVG images of the works plate, which then they helped transfer into proper artwork for me. Um, <clears throat> but as you can see, it's a. I mean, if you know what the the pug loco looks like, then there's nothing nothing particularly new here other than the lining. Um, as I say, it's you know the tooling is quite old now. Uh, and the motor in the cab is quite obvious. Um, I actually do have another one of these. Um, I attempted to stick the work plates, work plate on with super glue, and I completely ruined the cab. Um, so I'm not going to sell. I can't sell that one. It's it's, it's kind of the cab's kind of trashed. Uh, but what I think I'm probably going to do is there is a there's a chassis kit for this from high level models, uh, which allows you to remove the motor from the cab um, and have a fully detailed cab interior. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to at some point get that kit clean up the cab on my my trashed one uh, and then do a really weathered dirty uh, version where the if the lining gets damaged and stuff it's not the end of the world as I try and clean up where I got super glue all over the all over the cab um, but yeah it's a nice model it runs really well I will as we talk I will stick some video up of it shuttling backwards and forwards along my uh, my test track I recorded uh, I'll record some in a minute um, but yeah, so this is a it's a nice little model. As I say, it's reasonably rare. Um, they do turn up on eBay now and again, but they're much rarer um, than the the standard um, 
BR and LMS versions. You can stick, still pick the BR and LMS versions up new most a lot of the time. Um, as I say, this is now in the Homeby catalogue. Um, I did have a, um, a BR Black version, uh, which I sold a while ago, that was um, it from the Homeby one. And as I say, they're, they're basically identical. Uh, the tooling's not really changed much over the years. Um, so nice, but nothing... You know, it's a nice low cut, it's a nice lining, but it's not um, it's not particularly rare or, or I mean, it is a little rare. <sighs> what am I trying to say? Um, it's not it's not a really unusual model. Um, it's rare enough that um, hopefully there'll be some there'll be some interest in a in a very good, pretty much pristine uh, model. As I say, I've I've used it pretty much. I ran it up and down the test track when I got it, and I've run it and I'll run it up and down the test track later to get some video uh, and check it actually does work. Um, which hopefully you'll have seen by now, um, but it's pretty much mint. It didn't look like it had much use before I got it at all. Um, so that's that's the the goods loco. <clears throat> now the the other loco is a lot lot more special. Um, so as I said, uh, this is one of only a hundred that was made and sold. Um, I think they might have done another. Uh, Batman themselves may have done an LNY, um liveried version since um, but as I say you know this one was at the time um, one of a hundred so it may appeal um, more to collectors of National Railway Museum exclusive models than it might to just standard um, OO gauge models I don't know but again this is only the second time this one's been ever been out of the box when I first bought it I didn't actually have any track in the house I don't think to run it on um it was it was yeah it was bought because i wanted it it was the as i said the plan was to build um a layout essentially around this and the, and the goods train um but that's no longer um an interest and in, um as i say yeah this was bought in 2013 and <laughs> hasn't been out of the box since so it needs to find a it needs to find a better home it's not going to um it's not going to get used and enjoyed enjoyed here but let's have a quick look at it um, so it's got a, I believe a six pin, uh, no, that's, well, it's got a DCC socket in the cat in the tent, in the coal bunker. I don't do DCC, so I'm not quite sure um, what what that is exactly. What the what the um, thing is, but it does say somewhere, wherever it is. Uh, so look, it says DCC decoder. Yeah, six pin socket in the bunker. It's here in the, on the instructions, which again um, I've I've got in the box, obviously. Six pin socket in the bunker for a decoder. Um, so it's currently set up as uh, as DC, just standard um, twelve volt track power. But um, you can do DCC if you want. Um, but it's an absolutely gorgeous model. I mean, it's got full uh, cab detailing. Um, the again the printing on the works plate and the logo um, printing is fantastic. I'll get some close-up shots of those and, and put them on the screen um, for you to look at. And again, um, I've never run this before, but I am going to test it just to make sure that there's no there's no problems with it. Um, so that you will, hopefully there'll be a video up on the screen as I'm talking with it, shuttling backwards and forwards. Um, it's got a lot of weight to it, so I'm expecting it to run really, really nicely and smoothly. Um, but it is, as I say, it's a lovely loco. Um, there is it's just yeah I mean if, if I had all the money in the world I wouldn't part with it um, it's it's a lovely model and just uh, sat as a model um, it's gorgeous but I'm never going to use it um, so uh, I think it should go to a, a better home either a collector who will appreciate it for it being a um, National Railway Museum exclusive or somebody who likes the L and Y arrow, or somebody who just wants something a bit different, um, and fancies uh, fancies this. It is a really really nice model. Um, so yeah, so sorry for the slightly clickbaity video title, but um, I am selling essentially my dream of a of a large Lancashire and Yorkshire um, railway layout. As I say, I've moved on to um, modelling essentially narrow gauge. I don't have the space for an OO layout. I mean even a I could do a kind of shunting, shunting plank and stuff, but you know this isn't a small model. I mean, I know it's not. It's not a, it's not a huge mainline um, loco like Flying Scotsman or Mallard or something that's really really big. But at the same time, it's not small. It's not going to go around tiny little curves that I might be able to um, put together on a tiny little roundy roundy for kind of you know, um, 040 tanks like the um, like the goods 
like the goods loco this will obviously go down a lot tighter um, curves um, <clears throat> and um, yeah I enjoy the I enjoy the building of the models um, of the of the locos and things more than I necessarily do scenery and stuff so I don't have anywhere to run it I it's never gonna get run um, and as I said even if I built a shunting plank for it, it, it it's a passenger train um, it's not a, uh, a a goods train so it probably wouldn't get used much anyway so um, yeah it's time to it's time to say goodbye to it a little sad um, as I say I spent good money on it as it being a an exclusive it wasn't cheap at the time um, but hopefully it will find a, a find a good home um, so assuming they haven't sold by the time you're watching this there will be obviously links in the uh, the description to the the eBay listings um, hopefully um, maybe one of you um, one of you watching buys it uh, and if you do uh, I'm sure I'd love to see videos of it in use um, either nicely displayed somewhere if you're a collector or, or running on a layout if you if you happen to buy it uh, please you know if, if you end up buying it leave me a comment let me know that you were uh, in the video description and a bit of, leave me a comment below the video um, and let me know let me know what you think of the model when it when it's in your hands instead of mine uh, so yeah thanks for watching and um, back to slightly more normal less clickbaity titles and content uh, in the next video thanks <laughs>